Hi, this is your host Apin Bharatiya and today we have with us once again Lin Sun, Director of Open Source at Solo.io. Lin, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much. So excited to be here, Swap. Yeah, I have talked to you so many times and we always bump into each other at events, but I never got time to sit down with you and learn about your own journey. So talk a bit about your tech journey. Yeah, so I started, honestly, I started my college without anything to do with technology. I was a designer or architect to design like uh, buildings or co you know houses. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, when I started to my graduate school, you know that's when about the the technology was at a peak around 20, uh, 2000, right? So technology was a hot field. So I decided to you know why not start in technology? Uh, so I went down uh, information science as my graduate school at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, it just provides me. A amazing opportunity to see how technology can influence and change people's life. But I, it wasn't my first choice uh, during college. So it was pretty interesting. When you came to learn about open source, what was your first project that you got involved with? And what attracted you towards open source? There are three questions there. Depends on how you want to look at it. Right after graduation, I went to work at IBM, which is like the largest employer in my local area. A super cool company. Really love it. Uh, for the first few years where I was a bit at IBM, I didn't have any opportunity to be exposed to open source. Uh, right about maybe my seven, eight years into IBM, I got uh, the opportunity to work on this project called Apache Geronimo. So IBM back then made an acquisition to a company called Glucode, I believe, uh, which the entire company is built on top of Apache Geronimo. And uh, my manager started to ask me, look, we have this new cool project, uh, which is an Apache project. Do you want to work on it? So that was my first exposure to open source projects. So I kind of grew my ladder to become a contributor to Apache Geronimo, uh, become a maintainer and also like a PMC member. I believe that's what they call in Apache's project, uh, you know, management committee as part of the Apache project. Um, so since then, I've grown a lot of interest in open source project. So after I worked on Apache Geronimo, I worked on another IBM primarily sponsored open source project called Apache Ares. Um, and then I started to work on Istio. So I feel like I was very fortunate in working on a bunch of cool uh, open source projects along the way. From early on, you were involved with open source itself. So I cannot you know, ask you, hey, can you draw a comparison between working with the, you know, uh, in a proprietary company organization versus open source. But if I may ask you, since those days to today, how have you seen the evolution of open source communities? Yeah, so I've actually observed a lot of in, uh, evolution of open source community, primarily from the diversity perspective. I, the first two open source projects I was primarily involved, it wasn't very vendor diversified, uh, which is probably lead to none of the two projects was very popular at the end. So it was mostly IBM dominated open source projects. Uh, it doesn't have like I mean, it has a nice Apache umbrella under Apache Software Foundation, but at the end of the day, most of the contributor coming from a single vendor, which is IBM. So these days, as people you know go into cloud native, people go to microservices. I feel uh, as people running their applications in cloud across different, you know, more than one cloud, more than more than one environments. I feel that really fast innovation and collaboration within the open source community. So uh, now these days, when I look at open source community, not only I look at how active 
active the community are. I also look at the diversity aspect of the community because I really believe that's what's making the open source project really sustainable. Uh, one example I would give is I think Apache Mesos. Uh, you guys probably all know very, very popular uh, open source project uh, back then and very successful. They speak on a lot of conference, but we started to see uh, some red flag with the project because the diversity of the contributor and the vendors willing to invest into it. And that leads to later on, you know, Kubernetes went in the market and everything, yeah. What role do you see these foundations are playing or have played in making open source not only more popular, but also making uh, corporations more comfortable with consuming open source because when it is a company owned project, sometimes there is a fear and we are seeing this a lot of days where companies can change the license if they kind of you know feel some some heat from the market and competitions. So can you talk about the role of these foundations? Yeah, so I think these role of foundations are super, super critical for any open source projects. Typically, as we talk to our users who are looking at consuming these open source projects, uh, many of them do you care about is the project resides in a neutral vendor neutral foundation where they can trust so most of the user would trust a big foundation like cncf and apache because they are they have very well uh, reputation uh, among the user community so uh, for instance, on the Istio project, we, we literally experienced that, right? Because you all know Istio was not part of a neutral foundation for a very long time until last year when Google decided to donate the Istio and the trademark of Istio to CNCF. So since then, we've actually seen a lot of more contribution coming to Istio from different other um, big vendors. For instance, Microsoft, right? Microsoft actually just announced uh, their support for Istio uh, during KubeCon last week. Um, so these are the key players that we're attracting uh, as part of an open source project, which uh, further solidify, uh, you know, the confidence in users' uh, mind when they're picking a service mesh solution. So the other thing I would add is a CNCF as a vendor neutral foundation providing like superior marketing opportunity for open source projects. Since you uh, kind of, you know, work with an open source company, so this might be a tricky question for you, but are you still seeing some challenges that organizations face when it comes to embracing open source technologies? Or you feel that, hey, no, we are on the right path where, you know, it's very easy to get started, everybody using, or you still feel, hey, these are apprehensions that companies still feel when they, you know, try to embrace open source. Yeah, I think it really depends on what type of open source projects they are embracing, right? If you're looking at some simple tooling, uh, like Docker, right, very intuitive to use, but some of the infrastructure framework, um, particularly like Kubernetes or Service Mesh, you might be able to use it and think out yourself, but you may not be able to do the longer term support yourself, right? Because that needs money and the team and resources help the right team to staff that it's not easy so this is why sometimes it makes sense to partner a vendor who are specialized to be able to support you to be able to maybe uh, build some differentiation uh, for you for specifically for your business needs then thank you so much for taking time out today and share your journey and also share great insights about open source communities Thanks for, you know, uh, sitting down with me and I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Yeah, it's so much pleasure to talking to you. Thank you so much, Swap. Hopefully I'll run into you in person soon this year.